Greetings and welcome to Totality Town. The New York Times estimated that over 200 million people saw at least some part of the 2017 Great American Total Solar Eclipse. It really was a spectacular event, and one of the most asked questions afterwards was, when will the next one be? Well, that would be Chile back in 2019, and it was wonderful. Sadly, COVID-19 canceled the vast majority of travel to South America for the December 2020 total solar eclipse, and just left most of us flat out envious of those living in or near the path of totality. The next couple of years are still going to be difficult for eclipse chasers, too. The December 2021 solar eclipse will only be seen in Antarctica. Most of us can't afford that plane fare. And in 2023, April, the moon's shadow will only briefly touch both Australia and Indonesia. All of this makes the total solar eclipse of April 8, 2024 something to be very excited about, especially those of us here in the Western Hemisphere. This eclipse is coming to U.S. soil and is now less than three years away. At 4 minutes and 28 seconds, totality will last almost two minutes longer than it did for observers in America back in 2017. As you can see, the entire continent of North America will experience at least a partial eclipse in 2024. The place to be, however, is in the thin path of totality that the small circle of the umbra traces across the globe. As usually happens, the umbra first touches the Earth's surface out at sea, in the Pacific Ocean. A good bit of the path of this eclipse is out over the open water, so much so that the on-land eclipse is entirely an afternoon event. The umbra gradually moves east, making landfall at 12.09 p.m. near Mazatlan, Mexico. At local noon, 12.17, it reaches the place on the globe where totality will last longer than anywhere else a full 4 minutes and 28 seconds near Durango, Mexico. Ten minutes later, the moon's shadow enters U.S. soil, where it crosses the state of Texas, skirting the northwest suburbs of San Antonio before encompassing Waco, Dallas, and Fort Worth. A good bit of Arkansas will also see totality before the shadow moves into the Midwest. The center line passes south of Indianapolis, where they will see the whole show. Residents of Columbus, Ohio, will only have to make a short drive to get into the path of totality, while Cleveland and then Rochester are nearly bullseyed by the center line. The Umbra straddles the U.S.-Canadian border along the western edge of New England, with Montreal and Burlington both in the path. Once the Umbra enters Maine, it stays mostly in low-population areas as it crosses New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island before seeing land for the last time in Newfoundland. All in all, that's a lot of easy access to totality in 2024. The eclipse crosses Mexico, touches 11 U.S. states, as well as the eastern edge of Canada. Even if you can't manage to travel to the path of totality, a monstrous chunk of landmass will see the moon cover more than 80% of the sun's disk. The other thing to consider as you start planning is where the best weather is likely to be. Jay Anderson and Jennifer West over at Eclipsophile.com have assembled invaluable cloud cover maps based on long-term satellite data. The very short version of the story is that Mexico and Texas historically have the least chance of cloud cover on April 8th. So head on over to their website and read the detailed historic weather reports for each region that's going to be touched by the eclipse's path. The site is listed in the show notes, and I'll go into more detail about cloud cover predictions in upcoming episodes as we all figure out exactly where we want to be on the afternoon of April 8th, 2024. Thank you for joining me here on Totality Town. I have a wide variety of eclipse videos in the works, so please subscribe to the channel to make sure you catch them all.